Hello and <laughs> welcome to a visit with Nana and Papa, where apparently today is a comedy of errors. It's a, it's a comedy. <laughs> <laughs> My name is Valerie, also known as Nana. I'm Papa. Most folks just call me Jim. Or asshole. <laughs> <laughs> I love you. I love you too. Um, we're coming to you from Austin, Texas, where it is a little warm out, but we're inside, so it's not so bad. Um, but I'm hot. <laughs> well, it could be worse. We could be out there. No, we could not. Um, so this is mostly a knitting podcast with a whole bunch of other little rabbit holes we go down. Wouldn't you say it's most, like, your stuff goes all over the place. My stuff pretty much stays in knitting and yarn adjacent stuff. No? Sure. But we talk about all kind of things. Um, yeah, you be driving people away saying it's mostly knitting. No, it's knitting and. And lots of other stuff. Knitting plus, kind of like Walmart plus. <laughs> Paramount plus. I am wearing this Scrappy Striber tee. Um, I love how it fits. It's made with... The main yarn is Arctic Crafts by Benta. In the color away, grab your drink. She is no longer selling her yarn. Um, That's which is sad. sad. But if it brings her joy to be doing something else, that also makes me happy. We still like her. Um, the teal color is Perfection by Meeting Men Fiber Arts. And the brown is Umber by Ted Knits UK. I love the colors in this. I chose the coordinating colors because I wanted a sweater out of this. And I chose to do a stripey because I didn't think I had enough of the Grab Your Drink to do a full sweater. Grab Your Drink comes from Chevy's uh, Chevy Real. Chevy Real stuff. Chevy Real of, on YouTube. Uh, has a podcast, and one of her, her her buzz lines is "Grab your drink," and she does. I love her podcast. Yep, yep. Anyway, hi so, Chevy's. Um, hi Dan. Dan's. I think. I don't know if he is today. He's been doing the yeah, triathlons. triathlons. I'm doing yeah. really well. Way to go, Dan. Um, so that's it for what I'm wearing. Do you have something you want to talk about before uh, we move? I'm wearing my 100% merino wool. This one I came from uh, being on a clearance sale at REI. Uh, would not recommend paying full price at REI, but a clearance sale at REI can be a good deal. Full price at REI, well. <sighs> I love you. So, um. We do still have the summer top make-along that's going on until the end of August. You have plenty of time to make a top. Um, it does need to be, sh prefer it to be short sleeves, but if you make a top and you wear it in the summer... Hmm. A bikini top is a top. Yes, they can make a bikini top. Then it's not going to be short sleeve. It's going to be no sleeves. Yeah, I'm okay with no sleeves, tank tops, just something that you would wear in the summer. It does not have to be made out of cotton. I wear wool year round. Um, Highly recommend it. So, but you can use cotton. You can use acrylic. You can use whatever yarn brings you joy, or whatever yarn you have available to you. Um, Hopefully the yarn available to you brings you joy, or you bought the wrong damn yarn. <laughs> Just I, saying. I don't. I, I will put the name here because after we get done recording, we're probably going to draw a winner for a pattern for May because we had it going all May long. So we'll just do a pattern each month, and then we'll do a big prize at the end. Huh. News to me. He will pick the winner of the pattern, and then I will contact that person. I'm not sure why I got to, to do the picking here. Because you don't know the people. You would just be looking at the post, and you would either pick a number or whatever, and then you would pick. Huh. 
No. Don't you just love how I find out about shit in my life? <laughs> if not, I'll do. I'll make the I'll device do it. do it randomly. I'll do it. I'll, I'll have do them it. pick a number. Um, I, I would think that it should be on merit and not just on blind ass luck. No, no? because I want them to be. I, I told them that even if all they do is knit five rows, if they make some progress, they don't have to start. I'm not meaning that kind of merit. If you just put five rows, well, I'm. If I'm picking, I'm gonna tell you this right up straight from the heart. A, a, a comment: five rows. You will not be considered for a drawing of anything other than add to your freaking post. Five anyway, rows. Anyway. Five um, rows of what? Five rows of corn. No, I'm trying. Five rows of beans. That's not what I mean. If somebody is working on a tea, they don't have to finish to win anything. They no. just have to participate, and they have to add some progress on their pro on their thing. If they cast on and all they have are five rows done, but they're participating, they're entered into that. That's not what I'm talking about either, Dover. I'm talking about if you're going to put a post, put something in your post. Well, they have to because there has to be something there in order to be able to enter. Oh, well, you said five rows. If you just put a post that says five rows. No, uh, there has to be a picture showing. Here's where I start. Here's what I've got. This is what I've done so far. So, okay. Well, ones that have pictures that you can pick from, but you don't have to even see the pictures. I'll just tell you. I have five pictures. Anyway, we'll post a name and that person. We'll work this out later. I will be later. reaching. I'll reach out to you either on, wow. in, no, I don't want to reach out to you. You reach out to me. That way you know it's not some fraudster reaching out to you for a prize. And then reach out to me and send me what pattern, $10 or less on Ravelry, what pattern that you would like, and I will gift it to you in Rav. Um... That's it for that, and then we're going to go into another mile. But do you have something else you want before we go into the next mile? We got bunches of movies this week. Some of you watch, some I watch. We'll do all the movies in it. We'll do that after this one. Cause, and I'll just go through it quick. So, if you don't follow the Black Knitter, you should. She's awesome. But she is doing a Juneteenth make-along. The cast on day is June 11th. I think the end is July 3rd. I don't know that you have to finish a project. You just have to cast on and, you know, do progress. You can double dip if you're making, want to make something for, for my email and for that. That's fine. Um, if you are planning on doing the crochet along with Gary Knits, Gary Rides, that pattern qualifies because it just has to be a pattern or yarn or stitch markers or bag. The more items I think that you use, like the more entries you get. If you, if I don't know if that's true, but that's how she usually does it. Um, I don't have any bags from a black maker at this time and I don't have any stitch markers from one, but I do have yarn and I do have some patterns. Hello, this is Valerie, and I just wanted to pop in to say I am going to show you now some of the vi some of the patterns that I talk about in the video for the um, Juneteenth make along. Um, these are patterns that I'm considering, and it's the links for them are all down below. And from those links, you can see all the other patterns by those same designers. These are just my highlights. And I'm thinking, for me, that I can use this yarn, which is just a commercial DK yarn, and make the mittens. 
because it would be a pattern from a black maker even though the yarn isn't from a black maker the pattern would be mm -hmm. and so it would qualify so that's option one and then option two is remember the top that was a crocheted top from last week that we talked about using all the different purples that are or all the different browns well, I do believe purples one, did they not? They did purples one, hands down. But I have these yarns, and these are all Lola Bean, and this is from at Haynes House, and I could stripe these in that T, and then it would also qualify. And it's a T I already want to make. Mm. So if I can finish this before the 11th which is very iffy but if i can i might just because pink i mean purple and green and pink and green those are my favorite combinations so having green throughout it'll be just a green stripe and then pink and purple and then green stripe and pink and purple i think that might be really really nice but um but I may just switch and do one of the other patterns from one of the other designers where I'm doing pattern and designer and bringing them together. So there's that too. Um, I don't have enough by um, Urban Girl Yarns. I used all my Urban Girl Yarns in my brown striped sweater. So I don't have any more um, yarn. And then from her, and I, I've never had any from um, Chicken Coop Dye Works. But I have some links down. And in the comments, if you know a designer or a dyer that I don't have listed there, feel free to add them and add to the conversation. But um, I really like that Liz commented that if you want to celebrate Juneteenth and you are white, in America, the best way that you can do that is to purchase things from black owned businesses and support them and lift them up in your community. And that's the best way that you can celebrate Juneteenth. So, might be some people not know what Juneteenth is, but be so. Um, it's been a holiday for blacks for many, 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 many years, but the, Mer um, the U.S. government made it a federal holiday. But it is um, their day of, like, they got, they became legally were not supposed to be slaves. But there were a lot of places where they were still keeping slaves. But the last ones that were freed, I think, in Texas. It was. I'm pretty sure it was in Texas where they were refusing to give up their slaves. Anyway, the government came in and and forced them to and that was on June 19th and um, the fact that they even had to and the fact that they get around it with all the legal stuff now where they still keep slaves they just call it prison it just hurts my heart but oh, they call it salary too I'm, I'm a big anti-salary person. I'll tell you right now. If you have a job working for somebody and they but pay not, you salary, it's, it's because not, they won't pay you your hourly you, wage. But you do understand that that no longer exists in the United States. In the United States, if you make less than, I think it's less than 80000 but it may be more than that. I don't know. But I know it's definitely under 80000 if they put you on salary and you work overtime, they have to pay it. Wow, that's new and different. Yeah. I never had that back when I worked salary. I know. And my my opinion is salary, if you're not getting paid time and a half for your overtime and you're on salary, it, you are writing a check to your employer every payday to keep them in business. And how big a check you write depends on how many hours you work for free. Not playing that game again. Anyway. So Anyhow, I just think that if you can celebrate Juneteenth by casting on with us on the 11th, that would be awesome. I'm thinking because I'm pretty sure the 11th is a Sunday. I don't have a calendar on me. Let me get but, my phone. Um, Hopefully that don't fall down. I hit it, you in the back. 
if it is a if it is a Sunday then we're just our regular zoom um, on Sunday I will be casting on on that day if it's not on a Sunday and it's the Saturday which is also possible because I don't even know what day today is um, I'm pretty sure it's a Sunday though so on my Sunday zoom if y'all don't know I have a zoom every single Sunday it starts at 10 a.m. Central Time. That's 11 a.m. Eastern. Anybody is welcome. I'll try and put the link, the Zoom link in the notes. I keep forgetting to do that. But everyone's welcome. Um, the only rules I have are um, don't say anything hateful about somebody and don't judge somebody for being different. We celebrate our diversity. We don't. I don't tolerate that stuff. And, um, yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm going to cast on on that day. I'm hoping to have my... Juneteenth own. is a Monday, baby. It's a Monday? Okay, so we'll do a Monday. We'll do a Monday Zoom. I don't a work Monday the Zoom? whole week. Okay. So I'll just do a Zoom on Monday. I'll schedule it. Let's do it so folks can... Can participate no matter where they are. Let's do three o'clock in the afternoon on Monday. That so doesn't mean everybody can participate, but no, a lot but it'll of people last. Still be at work. I know, but it. I would. You know me. I'm not going to pop on there for I an hour. I only do something like five o'clock, so people can get off work and. But what show if up. that's when they're having dinner with their family and they can't? Because they could just have it on as background noise. Okay. Well, what do. We'll split, saying, the difference. There's more we'll split the difference for and we'll do 4 p.m. Central Time. So maybe you can come early, maybe you stay late, but we'll do 4, 4 p.m. Central. Uh, I'll look at Liz. I'll post it on Instagram. There we go. I'll post it on Liz because I know Liz is doing a cast on at her local yarn shop. And if she's doing it when I'm Zooming, that's not nice. So I don't want to do that. So I'll see what time she's doing hers, and we'll we'll do a cast on as well. Um, I can't do my um, crochet project because I've already cast on. So, but but if you haven't cast on for the crochet and you want to double dip, you can do that and do Gary's knit along as well. And um, that's it for her make along. And my intentions of participating. Can we, should we talk about shows? Sure. I've been wondering how come my arthritis is so horrendous today. Apparently there are scattered thunderstorms, which will do that to my arthritis. Not a good pain day for me. I, I did not take any of my pain meds because they have been making me real groggy. And I did not want to be groggy for this, but I'm debating on whether or not groggy or intense pain is worse. I'm Right now, I'm voting on the intense pain because it kind of sucketh. I'm but, so sorry, baby. Uh, my Little Mermaid uh, took Josh and Michelle to see My Little Mermaid so we could preview it, make sure it was okay for the girls. I thought it was a little too intense. After the parents saw it, uh, Josh and Michelle think it's a little too intense. So there you have it from actual parents of a uh, seven and five year old. If you have children, uh, you may want to go and preview The Little Mermaid. Uh, my understanding is the cartoon was also very intense. So, uh, Ursula, doesn't matter if she's drawn or she's just uh, Melissa McCarthy with makeup. Um, Ursula is not a nice person. <laughs> it's uh, not going to go well. Uh, Josh observed that uh, about the time it started getting real intense, there was an exodus to the bathroom. It's amazing how children's bladders suddenly need to be relieved as soon as something on the screen is going, uh, preview it. See if that's something your kid's going to be okay with. Because I don't care. No, Honestly, no. if it's not, you're the one that's going to be up with nightmares. No, no not on the, on the not scary part. Ignoring the scary part. I'm still thrilled that they 
did this movie the way they did and that they allowed Ariel to not have to be white, to not have characters who have to fit some... Yeah, it's, that's amazing that so many people have got their panties in a wad about a make-believe creature, a, a mermaid, not being white. Uh, there are no real mermaids that you can go and verify that they are all white, so... There could be every color of the rainbow. And guess what? Disney makes them every color of the rainbow. It is the most inclusive population on the planet. That's awesome. So not only do little uh, African-American girls get to see a mermaid that looks like them, little Asian girls, all the different kinds of Asian girls, because Asian is a pretty blanket term for a big-ass portion of the world, uh, there's all different colors, and they're all represented. So that is one of the most beautiful things about My Little Mermaid is its inclusivity. The not so beautiful so is they think are it's very good for teenagers. Then? Yeah, uh, I'm not sure what is uh, what is the rating on that. So you're just saying that really small children that yeah, are easily scared under, would be under not nine. a good idea. I would not take anybody under nine unless. You have previewed it. And you know your child well. And you know what's going to scare your child. Okay. But well, that's cool. Uh, well, while you're looking that up, I'm just going to quickly say I absolutely, unequivocally loved Mrs. Maisel. Season 1 and Season 2. I kind of wish I had skipped watching Season 3. I mean, I'm, I'm, it's nice to know how things wound up with the characters, but where season one and season two, a lot of stuff happened that was in a relatively short time frame. Do you know what I mean? Like, they mm -hmm. were really detailed. They built the characters. You knew the characters. You really came to care about the characters. They rushed through 40 years of happenings. Yeah. In, in eight episodes. I mean, they just literally flew through it so fast. Um, well, they knew that this was their last season. They'd been canceled, so they really didn't have a choice. It's but they, no, they had a choice. They did not have to do a cliff note version. They could have. <laughs> That's true. They could have ended it without telling us how it ended 20, 40 years in the future. They could have just ended it at a cliffhanger or at a. You know what I mean? Or uh, there would have been a lot of disgruntled people. But, it's but still, they could have done a much smoother transition on this it. This was literally the same as the last chapter in Harry Potter. The the little addendum chapter. Yeah, the, the addendum little chapter at the 30 end. Thirty years in the future. Ah. But see, there, that's, it was, that's and, I mean, similar it was to what happened. The whole season was that though. Every single episode was literally like that chapter. It's like they did a chapter for this character, just like that, 30 years in the future, a chapter for this character, just like that. I, it was just so frustrating for me. And anyway, I'm, so I'm, I'm going on a that's, tangent. That's similar to what happened in the, the last book of the uh, Blood of the Ancients. I, last book of the Blood of the Ancients came out. It is... Uh, Don't go into any details. Dragon form. And... It's book 14. So this series has been dragging on for 13. And apparently the authors that you know what? I'm really freaking tired of writing this series. So they did what these people did, only not as intense. They'd shoot by months at a time. They fast forward. Uh, you don't know that until they're talking about how much time so-and-so spent doing this. You're like, huh, we just saw them. And it didn't know that well, that was like one chapter ago. Well, apparently chapters cover several months in between. You don't need to know all the boring details that happen because they're well, going to give you other this boring one at details. Least put, this one they put in 1990 or, in, you know, we were just, we were literally just in 1961 and now we're in 1995. But uh, we were just in, and it just, it, it was just really hard 
for me to go to from the state of really caring about about the characters and the topic and to be honest we need more discussion um we currently live in a country in which women's rights are literally under attack we currently live in a country where your grandchildren that are female will have less rights than your children that are female well but or they have less than, than i did but my great grandmother she she was she lived through the change like really lived through seeing her rights change she she wasn't allowed when her first husband got killed she wasn't allowed to have a bank account she wasn't allowed to have she had children and no husband because he was killed in front of her and she was not allowed to have a bank account to own any property to anything like this was during the depression and she lived through it and then when she started having the ability or the rights to she just and, and it's probably it was, not necessarily that grandma k actually wanted to be married five times she had to be married five times because she, she could not collect a, world, a paycheck without she, a man she, she could lived not, in a world where she could not be on her own and it be okay in our society and now and legal it would and not right, be legal she couldn't even illegally she could go to work and she could earn a paycheck to but feed she'd her children. But have to have some man to be able man to cash a check in. had to have a checking account that that check got cashed in. And and own her home. And anyway. So, anyway. Uh, so, it's just hard. I think that that show was so great about showing the transformation or the change that was happening. That was maybe hard for people to adjust to, but important. And they just blew through the time in which that the change. They just and it hurt my heart. It just really hurt my heart. Anyway, the, the best part of uh, Dragon Form for me was that the overall message of the whole book mm -hmm. was it wasn't about the protagonist getting more power and becoming more powerful. It was about making connections real connections with other people and those connections gave them the power to defeat the bad guy because they could not defeat the bad guy on their own they could not amass enough power on their own to defeat this super powerful being but by and using the connections that they had built with all of these other people and letting those connections merge together and everybody combining and merging their power together, those connections together made them powerful enough to defeat the bad guy. That's awesome. I think that's a very important message for America. Our political bullshit has got everybody against each other. Even within okay. their own freaking parties, they're against each other. And I think they instigate that on purpose. As long as we are all against each other, we cannot use all of our personal connections and we cannot make solidarity. And this can support a lot more than this. So while everybody is being busy giving each other the bird, why don't you just embrace each other and see how we can support each other and lift each other up. And then instead of looking at what the other guy's doing wrong and looking at what you're doing right, look at who's doing the uh, stirring. There, there's, a, there's a thing on Facebook. I come across it often. And it says, if you put 100 black ants and 100 red ants in a jar and just set it down and leave it alone, those ants will mill around and they'll do their own thing and they won't fight with each other. They won't do jack doodah. But if you take that lid, put a lid on it, and shake that jar up and then put it down, those ants will start attacking each other and killing each other because they assume that the other guy is who started this shit. Is it the black ants' fault or is it the red ants' fault? It's neither one of their's fault. If you want to find fault... Find out who shook the jar. 
Mm-hmm. Is it the Republicans' fault that America is in a crisis? Is it the Democrats' fault that America is in crisis? It's neither one. Look at who's shaking the jar. That's whose fault it is. Anyway, back to stories and stuff. Uh, you got more yarn to talk about? I do. It's not. Um, I'm going to set this one down for a second. So we'll just go through them real quick. My progress is not substantial on this. It takes a lot, but it is growing. Um, I can't crochet like I can knit. He can tell you. I can knit <laughs> all day and never stop. Not true. Well, that's You true. must change needle sizes and, and projects and, yeah. or your hands start cramping up and feeling unhappy. So, But, but just... I can't go on this long term, but I still am progressing. So that's the crochet um, into the light, into the night, in, no, into the forest of the night cardigan. I can't remember the designer, but it's in the notes below. And it is part of the End AIDS Cal, C-A-L, 2023, oh, Pride, End AIDS Ca- Pride. End AIDS Cal Pride 2023. That's the hashtag. Hashtag End AIDS Cal Pride 2023. There is a KAL, which is an assigned pooling shawl or an assigned pooling hat. Um, or no, the hat isn't assigned pooling. The hat uses two colors. I have two no yarns. Idea. But anyway, there are there is some other options in Gary's thing going on. But I'm doing the crochet. And then it's going to be quick. Mm-hmm. This has not grown a whole lot. It's grown a little. You can see there's there's progress. We're getting to be a sweater. But I want to show you really quick before I put it away. I now have needle stoppers, which is awesome on this project. Because he can tell you there's been multiple times when I pulled this project out and said bad words. Because my stitches fell off the needles. Oh, where's your... Uh, uh, we'll talk about it next time. I'm not going to go chase it. And then, I'm in the middle of the row, but that's okay. I have... Well, it's flipped up. It does that. I'm hoping that blocking will make a difference. But I am on um, six, I think. Yes, I'm getting close to being done with the sixth block. And I need eight blocks, eight block rows, or rows of blocks. I need eight of them before I can start the decreases for the sleeves. Um, I don't, I don't know if I'll finish it next week. I'm hoping that I will. But if I don't, I know for sure that I will finish it the following week. Because the following week, I'm off work. Should we talk about that? We can. Um, I, you told me not to say anything because I would say uh, exactly how it is, but you did not want to. So. No, I, I'm i not going to. I got a new job, and I'm very, very happy about the new job, and I'm very happy to be look, working for the new company. I'm not going to say what the company is because I haven't gone through orientation, and I don't know what their rules are. So once I've gone through orientation, if it's, okay for you to know who I work for I will tell you but for now I have a new job and I'm very happy although I haven't started yet I start on the 19th I did put in my notice at work to let them know that the 16th would be my last day of work and they decided that no the 12th will be my last or no the 9th the 9th is my last day of work so this next week is my last week um, I'm not real happy about losing a week's worth of pay. But and the week's vacation that they aren't going to pay either. Yeah, I had I had it scheduled for vacation. So instead of having me work instead of vacation or letting me take the vacation, uh, they're just letting me go a week early and I lose the vacation. I lose the vacation pay. But And you lose the work's and, pay too. And the work's pay. Like I just don't get paid for that week. I'm not yet started at my new job and I'm not so the good part is is that the good part is you will no longer work for bogus ass snappers 
Well, there's that. But I'm just saying the good part is that we're not... At the moment, I think we're going to be okay because we're not being crazy about what we're spending. We're being very, very careful. And even if I have to wait three weeks for my first paycheck or four weeks for my first paycheck, whatever that may be, I am pretty sure that given what we have in the bank right now and what we... Um, yeah, but your friend Hillary said if things are I tough, know, she'll we'll, help we'll do it figure it out, so. but I'm just There's saying a, that right options. now it looks like we should be okay. We won't end up homeless or losing our apartment or whatever because of it, but it doesn't thrill me. Yeah. Um, but I am very happy that I'm going to be starting a new job. And I'm kind of happy that I am going to actually have a week off, even though it's unpaid vacation. It's a week off, and I plan on knitting and rearranging our living room. So, not next week, but the following week, you might see us in a whole new setting. <laughs> might. Big capital M on might. <laughs> I'm hopeful. We'll see. Um, that's it. Okay, last, that. last night, we, we were looking for something. I was looking for something for my beautiful darling. She wanted me to find her the movie The Women from 1939. He found it. Uh, a friend of ours, Stuart, said that's his favorite movie. Well, it's one of his. One favorite. of his favorite movies. So Valerie wanted to check it out. And we found it. It's available on Amazon. You have to buy it. But we watched a preview on it, and she decided she will buy it and watch it by herself because I didn't chuckle. I, I watched it, and I watched it, and I was waiting for something to tickle my funny bone. And apparently my funny bone is buried under too much fat because it was not tickled. So we didn't. Uh, she gonna watch that on her own. Sorry, Stuart. Uh, maybe after she buys it, and she, if I hear her laugh often enough, I might go and what you laughing at, and then I might join it. But uh, right now, it, it not it's not endearing me. But we, while we were doing that, we came across a movie by Dwayne Johnson from two thousand and three. This is back before Dwayne Johnson was. Uh, making millions of dollars by being in a movie it's before we met or when we met it was one of his earliest movies and uh it's not an it's not an academy award winner or an oscar winner or a, it's not a winner of anything other than it's not a bad way to pass a couple of hours uh there was some I laughs it. I there was it. some it's adventure fun. there was some moral lessons uh, all in all it was not a bad experience it was a pretty good experience it is called um the rundown the rundown and it's got uh, a lot of people who went on to become big name actors and actresses i think they're doing away with the term actress and they're just starting to use actor to cover all of them because uh Somebody who makes a living acting is an actor. Does not need to be differentiated male and female, I think. I don't know. But the, the rundown, the critics gave it a 70. The audience gave it a 67 back in 2003. That's pretty damn close. They are usually not that close. They are usually much more in despair. Uh, My Little Mermaid, the critics gave it a 67. The audience gave it a 95. I go to... Uh, Rotten Tomatoes. Rotten Tomatoes. Not so much to look at the critics, but to look at the audience. Uh, the critics think that because the word critic is in their name, they need to criticize. And I would rather see what people who paid good money to go see this movie thought about their purchase. If you go to the movie and you pay 12 bucks to see this movie and you walked out of that movie going, well, I want $9 back because that wasn't that good of a movie. <laughs> Or you walk out of the movie going, that movie was worth fifteen. I want my ta I want my two hours back. That was if me you, for if Samson. You, yeah, if you walk out of uh, what was that? Uh, Samson. 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 The movie Samson. Oh. We walked out of there going, God, I want my I want those two hours of my life back. I understand, you know, Harry Potter didn't stick to the books for shit. Uh, the Hunger Games didn't stick to the books. Nobody actually actually sticks to the books for some reason. They think that they must give you their interpretation of the book. Uh, and some of them are so far afield that the only thing they got right are the names of the characters. Uh, the Scorch Trials, that one comes to mind. 
But if you're making a story, a movie about a story from the Bible, you probably ought to stick pretty close to the source material on that one. Just saying, that's the... It's not really where you want to take uh, creative liberation. <laughs> it's all good. It but if you got the time and you got the inclination and you're a rock fan or um, Christopher Walken, wasn't it? Mm -hmm. He uh, was in it, yep. The, uh, Rosario Darth Dawson. Um, oh, what was the English guy's name? He's been in so much stuff. I don't know. I don't, I'm horrible. You do not uh, it was. It had a lot of people in there that you will be surprised. Uh, it even had a cameo by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Yes, it did. As uh, as The Rock was walking into the bar, Arnold was walking out, and they gave each other a hey. So that was that was kind of cool. Um, let's see. I'm reading a book recommended by the boys at uh, Needles Out the Ready, and usually me and the boys go like this on books. Right now we are going like this. We uh, we haven't got there, but we haven't gotten there yet. So we're 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 there. Uh, I'm still reading it. It's not terrible. It's not terrific. Uh, it's different. What is it? Uh, the The name of the book is "Everyone in My Family Has Killed Someone." Now that is an intriguing title, is it not? And it goes on to explain how everyone in his family has killed someone. Uh, I'm probably a quarter of the way through. And he's got a lot more family members that have not. So I'm, I'm assuming there's a lot more dying to be done. Uh, but uh, it's interesting. The, the author breaks the fourth window and the fourth pane and talks directly to you saying, okay, this is where I'm at with this. Some authors would do this. I'm not them. I'm this. And then it goes back to telling the story. Uh, I don't know if you're going to like that or not like that. I haven't really, I haven't really decided myself. And it's one thing when Deadpool breaks the fourth barrier and looks at you and says, did you like that? It's something else when the author's like, you know, some authors would do this and some authors would do that. I did this. Well, I just saw you did this. I didn't need the uh, little explanation. It's, it's not like you're Bob Ross painting, oh, look, we screwed that up, so we're just going to turn that bird into a tree. <laughs> yeah. There, now we're going to dry another bird. Oh, we screwed that one up. We're going to turn this into a forest. <laughs> you got to love Bob Ross. I miss Bob Ross. He, he was something awesome. Uh, anyway, um... Let's see, what else have I seen? Oh, once again, critics hated it. Audience loved it. I liked it. Uh, the Machine. Critics gave it a 25. They just did not like this movie. The people who paid to go see it gave it an 87. I would probably give it less than an 87, but probably around an 80. It was a good movie. It was a... It's got a bit of violence. Uh, it's a comedy, but it's a dark comedy. And it's apparently about an actual event from the comedian's life. He made his living doing stand-up, telling about his trip to Russia. And uh, I'd say give it a shot. It's not for everybody. Uh, if your theater has a discount Wednesday or discount Tuesday, go then. And if you didn't like it, well, hell, you're only out six bucks. If you liked it, well, what a bargain. You got all that entertainment for six bucks. Uh, let's see. Da, 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 da. The machine. About my father. Once again, critics, 34. Audience, 79. I don't understand what the critics' malfunction was. It is a story about family. And whether or not your family is always something to write home about, <laughs> one way or the other, they're still your family. And th this guy, his father has been his hero his whole life until he starts marry, uh, dating a rich girl and he wants to marry the rich girl. And then suddenly his father's not his hero, he's an embarrassment. But through the course of the movie, he realizes 
this man has stood beside me from birth to now and he is going out of his way trying to make me happy trying to make this work for me even though it's costing him what kind of a son am I it's not just a convenient oh it's coming out right around Father's Day I'm pretty sure they plan that but I would say if you get the opportunity go and see about my father it is a good movie. It, it has a, a just enough laughter to make you happy. <laughs> and just enough heartstring pulling to make you go, wow. And give you something to think about. So out of all the movies I saw this week, I would have to say probably about my father would be my favorite I know your favorite was the uh, the rundown, but you it's didn't see all the I, others. It's the so, only one I've saw all week. So. No, you, well, you saw all the Miss Mazels, and they well, set you up for me. Miss Mazel set the bar pretty low for Valerie to find entertainment and in anything it, else. It was pretty low. It was I. I didn't. It wasn't like something I had to turn off because I really didn't want to see because I really was invested. But if I hadn't been invested, I wouldn't have watched even more than one episode. But I really did love the first two seasons very, very much. Not I'm very bummed. Hello, it's Valerie and um, Jim's in there doing dinner. Uh, we forgot to record Happy Mail, so I wanted to pop in and include it. I received my package from Laura at Always Be Kind Yarn. Um, if you don't follow Laura on Instagram, if you want happy messages in your feed, just follow her. She's consistently bringing brightness and joyfulness and light into the dark on a regular basis. And oh, to be more like her on a daily. I aspire to keep her attitude. Um... She makes awesome yarn too. And this is her colorway that is called Midnight Skies Rainbow Nebula. And yes, it's sparkle. And yes, it's rainbow. And it's on a dark background. And I am super excited to knit this up. This is going to be a hat. I am way behind on my hat making. However, I can't do it just this moment. So. Um, when I finish my whips, this will be cast on. This will be going um, for sure to the... Um, why can I not think of what it's called? It's a great organization and they provide clothing to LGBTQ youth. Um, originally in New York, but now they've expanded to Chicago and I believe Detroit, but I'm not 100% anyway. I'll link it below because I am brain is not engaging. And then I also got her Taste the Rainbow. And um, I'm very, very excited for this one. Um, I may decide to try to do the rainbows in the hat. I don't know. Um, but regardless of what I make with it, I am over the moon excited to knit with it just super super excited and it also has sparkles and um both of these i plan to send but i may cave and keep this one for me i don't know um but these are both in her um sock sock weight um sparkle she calls it twinkle Sparkly socks, 70% superwash merino, 25% nylon, 5% stellina. And I just think they're beautiful. I also got this bag because, you know, we all need an extra. Who doesn't want a bag? And a bag with a rainbow. And then I also, I showed you earlier the um, rainbow needle stoppers. I also um, got the um gnome needle stoppers and 
Love is Love needle stoppers. And um, just so you can see, it is Laura from Always Be Kind Yarn. And her website is alwaysbekindyarn.com. Not certain that that will come through right. Never know. But, um, I just, yeah. Thank you so, 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 so much, Laura. Uh, my happy mail brought great joy um, on a day that was not so joyful at the moment when it arrived and just turned my day completely around. So thank you so much for that. Um, that's it for this moment. I'm going to sneak this into the rest of the video and um, yeah, have a great day. As much as I, I do enjoy spending time with you guys and Valerie and I telling you stories and whatnot, my pain threshold has pretty much been exceeded by this experience and I am going to break down and I'm going to go take my meds and hope that they freaking kick in soon. Sorry, <laughs> it's all good, loved one. So you're Y'all, good. be happy. Have a great week. I am going to put at the end of this, you can go. No. I'm, I'm just going to. I've got to do my. Okay, well, right I'm there. not there yet. I'm well, going to get there. I'm going to put after this, at the end, I'm going to include some photos in or, um, that I've seen on Instagram and on the Ravelry thread of some of y'all's works in progress and some of y'all's um, finished objects um, for the make-along because I, I want to share that with everybody. So I'm going to put in the photos. Here. And there, there's no guitar and there's no music this week because this has been a very not good week for breathing. So that, that, that only happens on good breathing weeks and this has not been a good breathing week. But, Miss Hazel, your sign. Be kind. Thank you, Hazel. Thank you, Hazel. Bye, Bye all. Have a good week.